Hello and welcome to another episode from the Water's Edge. You catch up with us a very short way into a winter session down at Barford Lakes. And the lake we've, we're on today have been quite kindly let on by Sarah, who owns Barford, onto the match lake. We're the only ones on here. And this lake is known for some pretty big match weights, so hopefully we'll be in some good action today. And we're into mid-December, so like proper winter fishing. And with that in mind, we've got a slightly different tactic to what I'd normally do. I'll, if I'm fishing a tip rod like I am today, most of the time I'll be fishing a method feeder, but with it being cold, we're on the Guru hybrid feeder. So we'll talk to you a little bit more about that when we get into the session and, and show you the rig. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna concentrate on getting this fish in, and then we can talk a bit more about what we're doing, hopefully for the rest of the day. But it's a good start. Hopefully uh, we could be in for a few fish today. So let's see if we can get this one in. Well, there we are. Like I said, it didn't take too long, but there isn't a shortage of fish in this lake. So hopefully, as we mentioned, we might be into a few. Let's have a look at them. Nice common to, to start with. Real lively character. Now, although we are, as we mentioned, mid-December, it is cold. This fish is like an iceberg. But we've got a nice day for it. We've been lucky with that. The sun's out. Cracking way to start the session. So let's not keep them out too long. We've got a net in. Hopefully we'll show you a bit of a catch at the end. But for now, we'll get another bait out there and we'll talk to you a little bit about the rig. There we go. Well happy with that start. There's plenty of fish in here, so hopefully it won't be too long before we're into another one. But it's a good time before we start fishing again to talk to you a little bit more through the session and what we briefly touched on earlier in the introduction playing that fish so basically as we were saying we're fishing in the cold now it's in the winter we're mid-december and i'm a strong believer certainly in the last few years and in around this area and probably most of the country that on commercial something that plays a massive part whenever you're fishing a feeder is the method feeder and i think in some way shape or form a method feeder or a variation of a method feeder is probably one of the best ways to attack a commercial fishery in today's style of fishing so with that in mind we are fishing a different style of method feed there it's the guru hybrid feeder and there's two reasons why i've switched from a traditional method feeder to this hybrid feeder the first one is, is as we mentioned it's cold the water is really cold so what we don't want to be doing and i think a lot is a big misconception of the method feeder. i think people think it's a real neat pile on the floor when you cast out that's not actually always the case probably eight or nine times out of ten if you could find somewhere clear enough and watch it the impact of the feeder hitting the water and dropping through if you're fishing pellets on there not so much ground but that stays on quite well but certainly pellets a lot of those pellets are off by the time it hits the bottom a method sort of creates in my opinion sort of a I don't know a, a double sort of dartboard size area with your bait in the middle and some some of it stays on there but certainly like the edges of it get washed off on the way down. You create a bigger area than you realise. So, and if you can get somewhere clear enough to try that, give it a go because it's quite an eye opener in the fact you think you're creating something like that and you're really not. But with this, you perhaps are. It's a little bit neater. So the difference between this and the method feeder is it's got this high ridge around the outside, almost like a boat shape. So what we were saying is, what I want this time of year, when a fish is perhaps picking up one or two small bits of bait and then moving on, you want that to try and be your hook bait. If you've got an area, say, big that big, it's picked up four or five bits of hook, it's gone, your bait's not in there. If you can create an area that big, you've got a real good chance of it actually being your hook bait that picks up. And that's what these sides do. It doesn't let the water attack it from the start. It's much more compact. So you can get it in there, squeeze it in there better, and it will actually get to the bottom in a much smaller lump. So it's creating that smaller thing, better for single hook baits, picking up your hook bait's gonna be in there. And the second reason, is because it's deep water again as i was saying the deeper it is i think the less effect the method feeder becomes it, it comes off as it goes through the water your pellets are falling off here and there and again you're creating a bigger area so cold water you're creating a smaller area to feed in and deep water again a smaller area rather than a bigger area. in the summer i really don't think it matters i don't think you can beat the method feeder and i would be using the method feeder if i was fishing a tip rod nine times out of ten but certainly in the winter that's the difference so let's have a little look at the rig now, nothing special actually about it. We'll, t we'll have a look at the rod and reel as well first. The standard 12-foot feeder rod, the 4,000 reel load of 8-pound mainline. So nothing spectacular. But what you do want is in here, we've got a good mix. You've got some F1s and some big fish well into the double. So 
It's got plenty of soft in the tip for the smaller fish, but certainly down here in the power, the diver spectrum we're using today, it's got plenty of power down the end there. And then you reel just accordingly, match that to the size. So you can use anything you like, but make sure it's got the, the combination of twos you can handle pretty much whatever comes into it. Then onto the business end, we've got a small four or five inch hook link of size 16 QM1 on a bait band. They're gonna be bait band in a few different colors of pellets. I'm a big believer in sort of colors and that. And then that just comes on to the, the hybrid feed that we're talking about, the main point of this video today. So that's the feature bit there. And then onto the main line. One other thing above that, which I do all year round, not just the summer, is I've got a flying back leg, which just runs up to a bead. So basically all that does is the last meter around where the fish is feeding is all gonna be flat onto the bottom and you're not gonna spook anything from liners and that. Certainly this thing, you don't wanna be spooking anything. You want every single fish to feed to try and be a conversion on the bank for you. So let's have a look, a look at some the bait we've got today. We've got two different sizes of pellet. Now what I've done before we started the session, I've soaked these. So the two mils I've soaked for two minutes, the four mils underneath here, we've soaked for four mil, and they basically, they're both of them are just hand squeeze and they'll nip together. These are bar for pellets only. A lot of fisheries now think it's pretty safe. Always follow the rule, use what pellets you have. So the bar for pellets have got some green and some red. I actually like that, it gives you more visual. So that's um, bar for pellets soaked in there. Now what you need to do is obviously the lake today we've got to, to ourselves. We've been kind enough to let on here to do this feature. But if you say you had this lake packed full of anchors, you want to try and make yours the most attractive bait out there. So what I've done is my favorite winter additive it smells really sweet. It's some, some F1 has gone into that. So that's in the water while they're soaking in it. So they've soaked up that flavor and that's hopefully gonna be enough to attract them down to our hook bait rather than anyone else's if we were competing. And while we're on the subject of liquids, behind me here, I've got a selection. I've got four with me. I mean, I'm probably the worst for this. I carry perhaps 10, 15 different liquids and that's an excessive, you don't need to do that. So I've picked like some of the favorites out and I'm, like I said, this time of year when you're not really looking to feed them, you can get maximum attraction with liquids with no food particles out there. So you're getting a column of water, oil, smell, all through the water where you're feeding, down to your hook bait, bang, hopefully you're into a fish. So these ones, I've got the F1 which is already soaked in some pellets. The other ones, I've got some goo, I've got some cell stick mix, some sticky L030. My personal favourites, use whatever your confidence in. I don't think a particular smell, flavour is better than anything else. It's everyone has their own opinions use what you know, and perhaps each lake reacts to a certain one better than others. So if you can find something that works, stick with that. And what I'll perhaps do with these is when we load the feeder, I'll squirt those on top of the pellets, so that's gonna give that, that, that extra layer of attractant. Not always, but every other cast to try and entice a bite of things get a little bit harder. So let's get on to the actual load and the principle. And I've got a bait box full of water, which I'll show you how these, these feeders react slightly different to other feeders. So you, you don't need to use a mould these, because they're a pellet feeder, you can just push them in your hand, but I like to use a mould. So you literally just empty your pellets in, squeeze on, now don't squeeze it as tight as you would a method feeder. And personally, with them sort of boat fins protecting it, you don't need to really squeeze as hard as you can. So I just pop this out of the way. You create your neat parcel there. Now with these holes neatly placed in the bottom of the feeder, encourage the waters to attack from the bottom, pops them out and it just creates a small little hole for that to feed in. So if I drop this in, I'm just gonna take this bait alarm off. If I drop this in this water, and hopefully if the camera comes in, you should be able to see this well. So that drops in. Now with that, initially, them fins are protecting that coming off, but quite quickly you can see the water comes from underneath and it pushes the pellets just over the edge. So you'll get an initial lip around the feeder and then the main bulk of it will stay within them the walls of that feeder that's what i was saying about it creates a smaller neater parcel and your bait just gets chucked off to the side hopefully ready to catch anything with that line all pinned down with the back lead and that that should be a free feeding zone and your bait's going to be one of the first things to mow so if you test this with a method and do test it at home if you especially if you use a large method feeder drop that in a, a bucket of water this side a little bait box once that's fully melted and come off and the water's attacked it, you'll be surprised that will nearly fill a two point bait box on the bottom. So you can see with this feeder, we've probably half or quartered the size of the bait pile we've got at the bottom. So that's why I'm using it today. And what I was saying about the variation of that between a normal method feeder. But that's enough of the talking. Hopefully I've explained why I'm using it and hopefully in a minute, 
we'll have some more success and you can see that the method into put into practice so let's load that up same way as you would anything else quick push and then that just sits in a nice so that's ready to go this time of year I'm probably leaving casts 15 or 20 minutes maybe if I'm not getting bites and what I've got I've got two rods identical setups one is clipped up about four foot from the far side because we've seen a lot of fish top and this one is what I started on which is a bit of a roving rod so this one's not clipped up and what I'm going to do is I've got I've got loads of water I'm going to cast it all around until I find a, find where the fish are so we've just had a bite from somewhere I'm going to go roughly in that area again if we get another bite perhaps we'll clip up and we'll fish there all day but certainly I think this is more very important this time is you need to find where they are so have yourself a roving rod f flick that around a few different spots until you find where the fish is sitting and once you know where the fish is sitting you can then clip up and keep making sort of a, an area for them to feed on certainly but all we're doing at the moment is chucking neat little parcels around find where they are and hopefully you'll be in for a good day so that's uh, gone in there nicely I'm going to pop that on the rest and we'll We'll give it time, hopefully, to see. It's probably worth mentioning because I was a victim of this myself before we actually done it. It's surprising how long 15 or 20 minutes feels when you're sitting watching the quiver tip. So have yourself a clock, stopwatch, something like that. I found myself reeling in after five minutes thinking that must have been like a quarter of an hour and it really hasn't. So it is a good thing to do is have a little watch next to your time yourself and then you can get a rough indication of how long your bait's been out there. But I'll just sit and watch this for a bit now and hopefully we'll be back into a fish shortly. We are just plopping it back in that not clipped up but same sort of area about 10 minutes and the tip's gone round again so perhaps there's a few fish in that sort of area I'll probably give it another one or two casts over there and if I get another fish in those casts I will clip up in that area and we'll keep fishing it but for now I'm just going to keep keep dotting that feed around small little parcels I don't think this one is quite as big he's coming up without too much aggravation at the moment I mean, they're not going to be the most lively now but certainly not just laying on his back and giving up he's just sort of plodding around there we, go. there we are little little f1 this time get some line out you said there's a a good mixture in there I say a little F1, they don't grow huge and that's a, for an F1 standard, that's not bad actually, but they're great fun and these fellas will feed all year round, so it's good to have a bit of a mixture in a fishery, so the big fish, they are hard to catch, it gets colder, but these are happy to pretty much have a munch whenever they whenever they come across some food. Quality, two chucks, two fish, let's see if we can make it the hat trick. We'll get back out there on that spot and then uh, we'll go from there on the pink again so I've got a few variations of pellet colour today for the choice but I'm going to keep on what's working you've got no need to change until you find something either doesn't work or you need a bite quicker so for now two and two is pretty good on with a pink pellet and we'll load that feeder up again and have another chuck We had to wait a little bit longer that time for a bite and that's what I was saying about moving around and not clipping up. This time we had two chucks without a bite and we've had seen three or four fish top slightly further out so we've just followed them. It's always a good sign as it gets a bit cold. You see a few fish top then just move about a little bit, try and find them and we're now back into them. So hopefully we might get another couple of fish on a new spot. He's not too far away and I think he's probably another another small carp or an F1. There we are. As we said, you're probably expecting to catch a few more of these in amongst the bigger fish. Hopefully we'll, we'll have a bigger fish or two later on, but 
if these keep coming in the slow period, I'm happy with that. Proper bronzy coloured, chunky little thing. Don't know if you can see it on camera. But yeah, cracking winter sport. We're into another fish again now. We've actually put a nice steady little run together of F1s, some smaller carp, some of the stockies they put in a few years ago. Getting sort of like one or two pound now. I think we've um, I think we've got another one. I'm not sure one, it's not one of the bigger fish I don't think by the way it's fighting. But like I said, it's great sport and it, it's certainly showing that the method we're doing is working. It's, I haven't caught many fish in the same spot. I've kept it casting around. I've changed my colour of hook baits, I've uh, worked quite a lot of those liquids we showed you earlier, so a few different colours of those have gone on, and sort of just kept changing things about, slowly keeping fish coming towards the net. And I think certainly this time of year, that's got to be your main aim, is you're not going to go out and catch hundreds and hundreds of pounds unless you really do sit on one of those red letter days and have a load of fish in front of you. You've just got to keep fish coming to net. If you can keep doing that this time of year, you're definitely doing something right. And uh, it's been nice today. It's been nice to to keep a steady momentum coming. Not particularly like rush with feet, but every sort of 10, 15 minutes, that tip's going round. If not, we're moving, trying another area, and there seems to be a fish waiting. So there's definitely a few willing to feed. That shows how much I know. Initially, I thought it was a a little F1, but slowly as the fight got longer and longer, I soon um, I soon realised my initial thoughts were probably wrong. And he's a a long, long little common. He's got a lot of length to him. But uh, yeah, he's under the rod tip. He didn't want to give up. He sort of went round and round for ages after coming in like a little fish to start with. And then a uh, then turned out to be all right, and it's nice. It's nice mixing in like better, bigger fish with those F1s and stockies that we were catching. It certainly keeps the variation going. It's nice when you, you don't know when that tip goes around what it's going to be, so just makes it all that little bit more enjoyable. And if you're in a match, obviously, these are the fellas you're after. Cracking little fish, let's get them in a the net. The tip swung around nicely again. To be fair, all the bites have been pretty similar, just nice, slow and steady. We've had no sort of indications. It's just there one minute and then not the next. But I'm assuming that's obviously taken into account what we're saying. The neat presentation is they're not really rooting around for it. It's just one mouthful at a time and your hook baits should be in there. <clears throat> Feels hopefully could be slightly bigger than the F1s. Slowly coming in. Be uh, be nice to end on a slightly bigger fish. So fingers crossed. There we are. That's a cracking way to end. We've saved uh, saved the best till last. Chunky common hopefully he's going to behave himself there we are it's been a great day sport like so we've put three of these better carp on camera mixed in with those i've had plenty of f1 stockies just bites have kept coming all day long and for mid-december and right in the middle of winter you can't complain at that so hopefully that's give you a bit of confidence if you get it right you can come out and do exactly the same as i said we're gonna we're gonna call this the last one so we'll sign off with this fish i'll slip him back in the net and then we'll show you the fish going back at the end. But I'd like to thank you for watching and we'll see you again on the next one. <laughs>